Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, I'm happy to be out here working again. It's been a rough winter, so thankfully the snow is all gone. It's sunny, it's warm, so we got some time to work on this Cub Cadet. Um, if you didn't see the first video, I think it was probably November. I'll leave a link in the description to that, but just a quick recap. I picked up this lawnmower last summer probably. Uh, it's a Cub Cadet. I can't remember the model. It's like HDS something. The side cowls are off. I haven't put them back on yet. But So last year <clears throat> we kind of cleaned things up. Got it to run. And then I gave it a bath with the pressure washer. It had pretty extensive oil leak and I couldn't figure out where it was coming from so I, I pulled the whole engine out, washed it off as good as I could and uh, just figured I'd let it sit and see where it was leaking from. Redid the wire loom because I thought there might be some kind of electrical problems. Didn't see anything like super obvious. Uh, we could not get the mower deck to engage. I think the PTO is working. I tested that. We gave it an oil change. Um, and I think that's about it. And then, oh yeah, obviously. After we were done with all that, I could not get it to fire again. So something's going on. And then I spent all winter, pretty much the last six months, just like, thinking about all the different things that could be wrong, you know, trying to remember what I did or didn't do. And so we got to kind of start over from scratch. Um, just before I started this video, I, I did check the oil level and it, it's, it was low again. So I topped it off and I, there's no like big pooling like last time. You know, last last year when we looked at it, there was oil everywhere. So nothing super obvious. It is kind of wet down here. And I, I think maybe it's just this little drain port is leaking. At first, it seemed like kind of a cool design because you can just you take this cap off and then you can put a hose on it. And then it's just, it's like a quick release kind of thing here. Right now, that's all I have to go on because the front crank seal looks fine. It's dry. Sump gasket. If I remember, there wasn't even a gasket. It was just... Um, well, it looks like there's a gasket or RTV or something there. But that looks dry. So the rear crank seal, I can't really see that. And I don't want to pull it if I don't have to again. That could be a problem still, but I, I think I'm just going to replace this. And I might even just get the, you know, the, the, the regular plug for it. Just because I thought this was kind of a neat little design, but now it seems like a potential problem source. I did drain the fuel out last year and I just put some fresh-ish non-ethanol gas in so we're gonna fire well we're gonna try to fire it up and see what's going on and uh, we'll dig into it and kind of go from there all right choke is on give it about half throttle Battery's clicking, so that's good. Give the uh, hour meter. Let's see what she does.
there's a few things we can do. I'm wondering, we should check for spark first. And then I wonder if I put this fuel filter in backwards. It's possible. It's got a little arrow on there that indicates the direction. So it looks like it's right. Um, yeah, let's check for spark first. All right, so I got my spark tester set up here in line. So this should light up if we have spark. And we do. All right. So that's good. So now we've got what appears to be a fuel issue. I suppose we could maybe disconnect. You see, if we disconnect here and break it after the fuel pump, we should see if fuel is coming out. And then we'll know if it's at least getting to the carb. All right, let's see if we can. Probably should have grabbed different pliers. Oh, it's tight. Can we? I wonder if we can just. Better off taking it off this side, maybe. Yeah, you guys are kind of in the way. This is uh, kind of a tough spot because it's, yeah, there's nowhere for it to go. Uh, let's see. We could possibly cut it off and replace it. Or we could see if we can unthread this side I'm trying to see i don't even think there's fuel there's a tiny bit of fuel in the filter so we could have a fuel pump issue we might have a carburetor issue like i said i drained it and it looked pretty clean last year so i didn't really do a full overhaul and it fired so something Something happened that changed where we're at. Um, let's just, let's start. If we disconnect here, we won't be getting a pulse to fire. So I got to break it after the pump. And on this side, where is it? I'm gonna poke around for a little bit and see the best place to get at it. I suppose, you know, what we could do is we could just uh, shoot some gas or starting fluid into the carburetor and see if that'll fire up and maybe it'll kind of prime the system. All right, it's a little windy, so <clears throat> I apologize for that. The audio is off. I'm just going to give it a little spray. I got some carb cleaner here. Of course, it's helpful if our little nozzle stays on. The air cleaner plate kind of blocks the carb on this one. And 
I want to take it off if I don't have to. Alright. fire up on its own this time. So that's good. <clears throat> it seems like we just had to prime the fuel system to the pump and that little shot of uh, carb cleaner was enough to get it fired. I'm not sure why it wouldn't start up on its own the second time, but it might just need to run for a little bit and kind of clear itself up. Um, I'm going to get some things kind of cleaned up. I'm going to button up the air cleaner. And then we can test the mower deck. Okay, hopefully this time it'll start up on its own.
had to engage the transmission. This test that seems to be working fine. This Cup Cadets with the forward and reverse is kind of weird to me. I'm used to the John Deere with the the two pedals next to each other. So having the reverse back here is kind of weird to me. Alright, let's test this mower deck and see if that starts up. Nothing. Alright, we still got some work to do. Okay, with the key in the on position, <clears throat> we're not gonna, I guess the accessory position, not the crank position, but one before it. So there's off, lights, this is the accessory position. <clears throat> if you pull the PTO lever, you should hear the PTO click. It's very audible, and that's a good sign that the PTO itself is working, because in the more the mower deck engagement system that's that's the most expensive part to replace so when i pull this you should hear it click and i'll even show you so the pto is right here it takes an electric signal from the switch and then it'll it's it energizes a magnet which grabs this plate and you'll see the plate move ever so slightly. So the PTO should be working. So I'm not sure if it was just stuck or if we have a faulty safety switch. So I'm going to fire it up again and we'll try to engage the PTO again and see if it works this time. So it did fire briefly. And now we don't have PTO. All right, so we have an electrical problem. Could be a safety switch or it could be the uh, terminals on the PTO are dirty or the PTO switch terminals are dirty, so we'll have to dig into it and take a look. All right, I just pulled the uh, PTO switch apart, cleaned all the terminals in there, and uh, let's test, let's see if we have power again. Interesting. We do not. All right, this is the weirdest thing. I don't even know how to explain it. Um, I cleaned the terminals, tested the PTO, and it was clicking with the battery off. So I went and put my stuff away, came back, fired it up, nothing. Shut it off. And I did not have the click again. So I went deep, deeper down the rabbit hole anyways. I took this front cowl off, which that was a blast. 
it has all of these little retaining tabs that you have to bend out to get it out. And of course it's super inaccessible. But the reason why is because I wanted to get at the reverse safety switch. You can see it, it's right down there. From what I had read last year, this switch, if it's faulty, can prevent the mower deck from engaging. So I did all that, and then now all of a sudden I have voltage going to the PTO. So I can't explain that. Since I'm in this far, I'm still gonna take that uh, reverse switch out and clean it. Just because it's something intermittent like this, it makes me think that there's just a bad connection somewhere. Otherwise, if that still is giving me intermittent problems, I'm fairly confident that the PTO itself is good because it does click when it receives power. It's just that there's a, there's a problem somewhere in the wiring. Uh, last year I did replace this relay. The old one was all bubbled and kind of bulging. So if cleaning the um, reverse switch doesn't work, I think I'm going to just replace the, the PTO switch. Um, it could have an internal failure. Even though I cleaned the terminals, that could very well be the problem. So we will, in the meantime, I'm just going to take this reverse switch out and clean it and I can't really there's not a good way for me to get uh, you guys in there I kind of need both hands and it's a tight space so I'll bring you back when I have that all cleaned up so here's that reverse switch when you engage the reverse pedal it has a little lever underneath the frame that pushes up on this plunger and then it must short out so that way I can't engage the mower deck. So theoretically, I mean this lives in a pretty dirty environment. You know, it's right above the mower deck so there's a lot of dirt and debris. So theoretically this, if this plunger was sticking, perhaps that could cause the intermittent issue. And then the other side of the uh, of this connection, I gotta clean that up too. So I'm gonna clean those up. And then I'm gonna have to think about it. If we still don't have power or we have intermittent power loss to the PTO, I'm gonna have to trace some of the electrical stuff. I'm gonna order a new PTO switch if that's the case, and I have to order a new drain plug. But I'm gonna get this thing put back together, kind of buttoned up, and then we'll give it a bath. It's pretty dirty just from sitting, and kind of reassess where we're at after that. All right, well that looks a little bit better. I got the side cowl put on. Everything's cleaned up, washed up. I even used some super clean degreaser to help get the stubborn stuff on off. Having a hard time. There's some sun fading on here. I think I'm gonna do a wax. Let's see if that kind of blends out. Um, I was gonna look at getting some touch-up paint. There's some spots here. Where the paint is chipped it's like crazy expensive so for the actual cub cadet branded touch-up paint so i might just see if i can match something um, but for now i'm gonna let this uh, dry off work on a few other things and then i'll come back and make sure that it still runs and we'll try the pto one more time i think i'm still gonna order a switch but see if it works. All right, I'm gonna let this dry and I'll come back.
Hey guys, it's about, I don't know, a week later or so. I've been kind of picking at this project when I had time, but I, I didn't really have a lot of uh, consecutive time, I guess, to really work on it. So just still trying to <clears throat> diagnose this electrical problem. I put a jumper from directly from the battery to the PTO and it clicked over just fine. And I've been just at my wits end trying to figure this out. But I think I got it. So first thing, the I've got a jumper in here for the reverse relay. Um, the brand new relay that I got, I should have tested it. Um, tested for uh, continuity, and it was bad. So I got a new one coming. So that was the first part. So I thought after I put this jumper, this jumper essentially bypasses the relay switch uh, or the re the reverse relay. And so I threw that in, thought that would solve the problem. Still not getting voltage at the hot wire of the the red one here of the PTO. So this is kind of a, a different design. It's 100% uh, power and then the ground is interrupted in order to break power or break the circuit to the PTO. So I was a little bit different trying to wrap my head around that. Um, but whenever the key is in the run position, this red wire should have 12 volts to it. So then I found, even with this jumper in the relay, I still wasn't getting voltage here. And in the, the service manual, the troubleshooting says, if that's the case, like step one is, do you have 12 volts at the red wire? If not, then there's a break in the wire somewhere. So I had to undo all the loom wrap that I had put on, got everything taken apart in the whole harness and still couldn't find anything. There was no obvious break or anything. The only thing was I had redone, uh, the previous owner must have clipped these two wires for the PTO harness and they had spliced it with just, uh, uh, what do you call them, wire nuts. So I put on some shrink tubing and some solder butt connectors, thinking that would solve the day. Well, since I didn't have anything else going on, like I, I had no other, you know, obvious breaks or anything in the wire, I clipped this back, cut it out, and redid it. And now, with the key in the run position, if I pull the PTO switch, I have voltage. So that should be good. Should be. I'm gonna wait. After I get this relay, it should be coming tomorrow. I'll throw that in and that should be fine. The other thing was I was having a hard time starting it. Uh, it wanted to have a little spray to start and then it would run fine. So I knew there was probably a fuel issue. I hadn't cleaned the carburetor because it looked pretty clean. So I took it all apart, um, rebuilt it, cleaned it, did everything. And now it fires up like this. The idle is a little bit on the slow side, so I might have to turn that up just a hair. The other thing is uh, this choke lever. The cable runs through here, onto here, and then there's a linkage that goes back to the actual choke valve. And this was getting bound up behind the plate for the air cleaner. So I had to manipulate it a little bit in order for there to be clearance. So what was happening, and the reason why I wasn't able to start it was when you pull the uh, choke lever there was too much interference 
and so it wasn't actually closing the choke valve all the way so it wasn't actually choking the carb now that that's all cleaned up and working correctly the choke will close and it'll start on a cold start so everything is looking pretty good i just need to get that uh relay and then for today now that everything is more or less solved i'm just going to button up all this wiring and put that loom wrap out back on and we should be done so it's a couple days later got everything the loom wrap all redone and service the deck i didn't film that because it's pretty straightforward everything was ready to go and let's see how she runs and operates now that i have the relay put in uh, we can test the pto and go from there kind of hard to do with one hand All right, so there we go. All in all, it's a pretty sweet machine. I think this is 98 or 99 it was built. Probably 99. Uh, I did not do any painting. Just the, I did a little uh, Plasti Dip repair on the seat cracks. I think I forgot to mention that. All in all, it's pretty sweet. The uh, Kohler engine runs pretty quietly. It idles nicely. Um, and with that relay fix, the PTO is working. So I'm happy about that. I posted this thing on Marketplace, and within 12 hours, I had 20 people interested. So I've actually got a guy coming tonight who's going to take a look at it, and he should be here shortly. So um, if you guys have any comments or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. And until next time, thanks for watching.